Hey everyone, today I'm in the Santa Fe, New Mexico area at the Fairview Cemetery. This cemetery dates back somewhere around the 1880s, but I know that they moved some graves from downtown Santa Fe somewhere, and those are from the 1860s, so somewhere in here they, they are resting. Um, so we're going to take a look around and just explore the cemetery a little bit. This is right at the front entrance of the cemetery. Just a little information on it. It's on the State Historic Register. Historic Santa Fe Foundation has placed a uh, placard there. And this is on the National Register of Historic Places. Fairview Cemetery was founded in 1884. And the company barely survived as a business venture until 1899 when a woman's board and trade of the Library Association assumed operation near the turn of the century. The old Masonic Cemetery downtown was condemned and many burials were moved here. The earliest headstone is 1862 and then it just tells a little bit more history there. So um, they are maintaining this cemetery and it looks great. There's a lot of graves in here packed in the little cemetery. I think this is just an information booth talking about some of the burials if you needed to find someone there is a book there and then they have up above a map of the cemetery with the plots but let's take a look around at some of these this little mausoleum is a pretty interesting I don't know if that's Gatron 1911 certainly stands out there are only about three of these ones this style that one is Hannah can't read the name on that one yet but we'll go over to it it's pretty interesting though a lot of names in here and a lot of markers I know if we can find some that stand out or not this says Renahan 1928 and that one over there says Seligman This uh, old crow over here, he's uh, digging around in the dirt. There's a Ralph Emerson Twitchell. It's interesting, there's a lot of these uh, hills in here. And uh, what looks to be some sort of that's what this crow was digging around in. Some sort of trail here, maybe from moles or something like that, and they pushed the ground upwards. This is a big one right here. Let's see who this is and how old it is. Thornton, 1930. Oh, we stumbled across one of the... Uh, the historic ones. So we have William Thornton, 1916, and he was governor of New Mexico from 1893 to 1897. And then his wife is here as well, Helen Thornton, 1846 to 1930. So we kind of stumbled across this. And right here we have May Hole Pope and uh, William Hayes Pope and Chief Justice of New Mexico, United States District Judge. So that's pretty interesting. We just kind of stumbled across that. I knew there were some in here, I looked it up, but I didn't know where. So it's pretty neat that we stumbled across that. It makes me wonder who's to the left and right of them. And I'm not seeing anything on markers that indicate anything historic but that doesn't mean anything robert jasper harvey 1892 to 1918 so not very old 26 sergeant in the 115th military police so that's pretty interesting right here abraham staub if i'm saying that correctly and Julie Staub. So Abraham passed away in 1913. 
and Julie was 1896. We have some more family members. Arthur down here below, 1952. Paul, 1915. Julius, 1913. And we have another one over here. 1968 for Edward. There's also another one here for Henriette. And that is 1883. So that is the oldest one in this whole family plot area. Um, someone has left this gate open. We'll see if we can close it. I guess it doesn't have much of a latch. Oh, yes, it does. This pushes down. So that may be... It's rusted, though, so we can't close it. But it has quite a gate on there, though. And then the cement posts here with thick pipe that's kind of been bolted into the posts but that's quite a memorial marker there so I don't know just thought we would look to the side here Robert L Grant World War II Purple Heart recipient 1925 to 2011 Seth, 1960 to 2009. I believe this is still a very much active cemetery and there are burials going all this way and over this way. If you're watching this video and um, you haven't seen the other video that's kind of connected to it, this wall right here is separating another cemetery and I'm not sure what that cemetery is yet Hopefully I'll do some kind of investigating and find out what it is. But the cemetery on the other side of that wall is completely abandoned looking. I have no idea why. But I'll put the link up above. Maybe a little flash card or something that you can click on. So I don't know if there's anyone else. This one kind of stood out to me. This uh, almost looks like a crypt up top the way that is, but it's been miniaturized. I thought maybe it might have been an infant or something, but it's not. September 11th, 1858 to December 9th, 1902. There are some older ones in this cemetery for sure. And this is... 1881 right here mini Gildersleeve and then this one is 1884 there's not a first name but it's a Gildersleeve as well five years and 22 days is what it says this one kind of stood out here because it's cracked in the middle so we have an infant Herman and Henriette uh, I filled looks like and born April 4th 1829 and died April 5th 1829 Wow 1829 this has to be one of the ones that was moved from the downtown area that is old 1829 Wow this is kind of interesting right beside it Jesse Lee Clements 1888 to 1941 there's a deer head there, a buck. Just a simple little marker. Cannot believe how old that is. You know, they said some of the earlier were uh, 1860. I gotta get a close up look at that. Maybe that's 1879. I guess that's 1879. The font was a little difficult. And it is a bright marker. Um, maybe the camera dims a little bit, but the sun's shining on it. <laughs> it was really bright. Kind of hard to see that's still pretty old though 1879 here we have a mason died in 1895 age 47 benedict khan could spend a lot of time in here looking around this you can tell is very well maintained all the brush 
it's been sort of cleared away there's no major brush there's not any it looks like they have a, a few critters in here but it's nothing major um, and, and then it's manicured with these bushes here and kind of these little pine bushes or pine trees that just aren't able to grow tall in memory of Rosa Weedles born in Bavaria March 3rd 1843 and died in Santa Fe New Mexico October 31st 1882 that's a neat marker at one time it would have had something up top you can see the metal uh, rod and it probably would have went up higher it's pretty old so over time probably just disintegrated so it's an interesting cemetery We've got a cross right there I see a big huge boulder over here that's interesting let's go have a look at that I mean that's quite a marker right there that's not going anywhere here lies Eliza Wilcox is what that says Eliza Wilcox. Look at the size of that marker. One big, huge boulder. I've never seen a marker in a cemetery like that. It's huge. Almost looked like it had a geode or something in there. It's a little bit different. That is something that stands out in the cemetery for sure. There's a lot of markers in here. A lot of beautiful ones. Love this cemetery. It's well maintained. Let's go over here. I see some white ones off this distance. They kind of stand out. I think that's a prairie dog hole right there. That's a pretty active looking one. 40 41 degrees or so and uh pretty sure it's underground trying to stay warm so it looks like they have some animals in here look at all this section through here it's unbelievable this section is nothing but funeral home markers it just has the standard markers that you see, these little round posts right in front of it. Those are the, the lot numbers. And so the uh, probably the, the association that's in charge of this cemetery would be able to tell you who's there. They, they just look like this. That's how they identify who's there and that someone's there, if someone's there or not. And uh, when you bury somebody, oftentimes these are sunken in the ground and you have to kind of find these so in the old days they would use stone nowadays they use kind of metal so that they can go over it with a metal detector but this is lot 147 and there's a funeral home marker there but the average person doesn't know who's there if they have an office um, they might know that information here's a real pretty bluebird on top of that cross right there let's see if we can zoom in before he flies away that's real pretty bluebird there it's a different bluebird than what I see in Oklahoma and Texas I don't know exactly what kind that is so if anyone knows leave a comment the ones in Oklahoma and Texas have kind of an orange crest on them from what I've seen there's not a whole lot where I live it looks to me like this could be the female right there because she's got a slight blue tint and uh, they're getting kind of scared they're, I don't think they're used to people but I think that's a male a male right there and then a female over there they're flying away kind of going away from me this one right here is Margaret Montoya and Emma Montoya so we have 1918. I think that bottom one says 1912. This is just a, 
a stump here so it could either be an infant where the life was cut short and that's what those symbolize or it could be a woodman of the world uh, person so it's pretty birds I don't know how close they'll let me get it's pretty it's a different kind of bluebird than what I've ever seen and then if I can swing over there I believe that's the female right there they're not making any noises oh he just flew down a little closer the female is a little more skittish you can see it fly away hopefully it flew away quick I don't know if they're putting some sort of uh, electrical line in here or not but there are these blue flags through here not sure what that's for here we have one here I'm sure this that this is an infant yeah uh, what is that one year one month and 14 days died in 1908 uh, Carl Worley is what that one says these markers over here kind of stood out to me these white ones I thought we would have a look some crosses here Manzanares if I'm saying that correctly I like this old wooden one Rose Lucero, 1959 to 1994. This one's interesting there. Let's see what it says. In memory of Emersion Gonzalez, it's kind of hard to read because it's so bright on that white right here. This is just a simple wooden one, but I like it. Paul Romero, Pee Wee, 1977 to 1994. It has a cement base right down there. And then a wooden top one. It looks like it may have had a photo up there at one time. There's another prairie dog hole there. It looks like this had a maybe piece of paper and photo up and through there and it's just gotten wet and starting to, to get to where you can't make anything out at all. But uh looks like Joven Ricardo Aguilar and uh the date I think is nineteen ninety four. A little difficult to tell. It's eroded away a little bit. So these are interesting. They just have sort of a little elevated cement area and they have some vases right here where you can plant flowers and a little planted area right here and a little area for looks like Mary maybe. There's some kind of picture back there. I think maybe uh, of the actual person maybe no that's a crucifixion picture there and then we have an angel Ernesto or Nalas 1924 to 1992 so interesting this is a little diff different there as well there's another one right over here And they have a little framed picture there. I'm not sure who that is that's on the picture. But uh, I think that's Mary there. Maybe another one there that the head busted somehow. This is a little cracked. 
But uh, 1922 to 1993, Angela Enriquez. Mauricio. Anyways, it's a neat little cemetery. There is most certainly a lot to look at in here. But I thought I would just give a short little tour. So I hope you enjoyed the tour of Fairview Cemetery. I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you guys next time.